Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I am the long-awaited Darkhold T4 infographic. I know I'm behind on these. Thank you for putting up with this. I frankly have been very busy in my real life uh, with stuff like that. I also took a lot of time with this one. I wanted to get it right. That was part of it as well. Talk to a lot of folks. This is not just my thoughts. It's input from a lot of people. iGAP in particular, I want to thank, who put a lot of time giving me his thoughts. I didn't take all your thoughts, iCap, but I really took a lot of your input into account. So we're going to go through this. Um, one thing I'm just going to say is this, uh, it, it's linked below and it's in my Discord. All my infographics are there. But this one, um, I really tried to create from an arena perspective because for right now, this is the arena meta. Uh, I understand that there are um, ways around that. People are using rogues. Sometimes people are using... Um, Eternals and playing around the anti-Eternals stuff here in the Darkhold kit. <clears throat> but for all intents and purposes, this is an important arena team. Um, one thing I will just say as a starting point, though, if you are running this team in arena, you really don't want to be using Scarlet Witch. And I and I think that's the case, even if you don't have Dormammu. I know a lot of you don't have Dormammu yet. Even if you don't, I think you should be using a different character here. Um, and I would suggest, for example, I mean, I, this positioning is assuming that you have Scarlet Witch um, in there. And, you know, frankly, if she just dies off, then that just creates a gap between Wong and the rest of the team. But I say here you should use Dormammu, Emma, or Red Guardian instead of Scarlet Witch and Arena. There are, of course, other team comps you can try. But uh, I think um, those are tr tried and true crom uh, comps that you can use. All right, let's go through here. Uh, let's start with the T4s on this team. Uh, and I'm, like I said, this is from an arena perspective. And there are a ton of essential T4s in this team. Uh, and I think that's just because this is arena team and you're going to invest heavily in them. I decided not to try to um, change my tiers uh, based on the fact that this just was a T4 intensive team. So the first... The first one, and you know, I, I don't think this is going to come as any surprise to anyone. The number one essential T4 on this team is the Morgan Le Fay passive. This is uh, the best ability on the team, period, which is that this T4 on enemy turn fills speed bar by 10% for self and all dark hold allies. So as the enemy takes turns, it speeds up your entire team. This is a turn based game, and and Really, uh, turn and get, taking more turns than your opponent not only means you're going to cause more damage and inflict more debuffs and heal more and all that, but it also means you could take advantage of situations that develop. So if an enemy is close to death and you're the one who's going to take the next turn, you can ping that enemy and kill him. Um, if the enemy's got the next turn, they can heal that, that character up. So very important to, to be the one, you know, taking as many turns as possible. So <clears throat> there's no question that this is the best T4. And frankly, on top of that, the Dark Hole team gets 30% max health. I mean, this would be an essential T4 even if this top line wasn't here and this top line of it with the speed bar is the most important ability on the entire team, in my opinion. All right, the number two essential T4 is the Agatha passive. Some of these here, I will say there's debate here. When I talk to other people, they had... A different ordering up top. I think Morgan Passive is obviously number one. I just, uh, I, I think the bottom line is when I think of essential T4s, I think the T4s that will make it so the team just doesn't operate well without them. And getting 25% drain is huge. It's a huge portion of the sustain of this team. It means that when you put out damage, 25% of it's coming back as healing. Uh, if you don't do this T4, try facing dark hole uh, teams in Arena. Uh, that do have this T4 and you will lose. <laughs> it says that simple. So I feel like this is essential for an arena team. Uh, all right. Next, we have, um, by the way, I will say in, in another context, maybe you, you can get away with it. If you're not doing the mirror match, right, if you're using Darkhold to punch up against some other team in war, it may be less essential, but it's super important uh, regardless. But certainly in the mirror match, which are long, drawn-out fights, you need that drain. All right, the number, thir the number three uh, um, essential uh, T4 is the Morgan Ultimate. And, you know, that's just another one that is, is absolutely important to make this uh, work. So uh, this applies trauma and ability blocks to all controller enemies. That includes the enemy Morgan Le Fay. 
<laughs> and it also includes, by the way, Scarlet Witches, which is why she's such a horrible choice for this team in Arena. Um, in other matchups, like in Crucible or something, she's she's fine. I mean, she's not like super ideal, but she's fine <laughs> on the team. But um, here, if you're if the other Morgan goes first, she just ability blocks your Scarlet Witch. Um, but in any event, which whichever Morgan Le Fay gets this off. Uh, first is going to have a huge advantage, which is why I suggested Emma as a potential fifth here, just to make sure you go first, purely for the speed <laughs> advantage. But in any event, um, this is just absolutely huge. If you don't have this um, and the other person does, they're going to just ability block your Morgan Le Fay, and you're not going to do that to theirs. And they're going to have a huge advantage. So it's a no-brainer. All right, the next one on the list, number four, is the Agatha Ultimate. And, <laughs> you know, this is another one where I think outside of the arena context, I could see people having a different view. Um, but my, you know, my take on it is, you know, this is what essentially, you know, kicked Icarus and Cersei out of the arena meta. Now I know before you go to the rush to the comments that people are using Icarus and Cersei, particularly in arena offense to try to, you know, they basically play around this ability and they're still able to do very well. And that is, of course, the case. Icarus and Cersei are super powerful, almost OP, uh, even now, um, particularly in Arena. They're built as Arena characters. The only reason that they, you know, are don't overcome this team uh, as consistently and they really need a human controlling them is because of this ability here. If you don't play around this with... Um, with the Eternals, you're going to lose because it essentially applies stun to Icarus and Cersei. It's a very lazy way from the devs to basically make this a counter to Eternals. And so in my mind, you're not going to use this, for example, on arena defense if you don't have this T4. So that's why I put it so high. Others may disagree, but I think for the arena context, super important. All right, next one um, on the list is of the most uh, essential is the Morgan Le Fay special. And, you know, this is an iconic ability uh, here for her. This Time Warp ability is really cool because what it does is it basically reduces everyone's speed bar to zero. We already talked about how important speed is in the game. Now, if you don't have the T4, this is very situational because then, yes, it does some other good things. It clears, you know, a couple of random positive effects from all enemies and applies immunity to your team and heals uh, Morgan Le Fay. But, the bot but really... Whether you want to reduce speed bar for everyone depends on whether your team has more speed bar or the opponent, right? You'd have to look at the speed bars and determine whether that's a good trade, <clears throat> trading whatever speed bar you have for what the opponent has. But this ability now uh, with the T4 is an always press, pretty much, and that's because not only does it clear all positive effects from all enemies, which is huge, but it applies speed up for two turns. Why is that speed up so important? Well, what it means is that if both sides are reduced to zero, because your side has speed up, you gain speed bar 50% faster. So you gain a speed advantage on the enemy. Very, very important. Um, absolutely essential uh, in this fight in the mirror match in, in Arena, which is where how I created this infographic, primarily looking at that because this is, I think, first and foremost an Arena team. All right, next, <laughs> the Heartless Passive. And, you know, this is another one where I, you know, I think... They're, these are all so good, very hard to rank, but a, another one that I just can't see doing without because this is 25% crit chance and crit damage for the entire team. And on top of that, it, it, at the end of any Darkhold ally's turn, instead of barriering that character for 10% of, of Heartless's max health, it's 15%. And that's huge. That's a lot of extra barrier every single turn. Uh, which is a lot of sustainability for the team. And by the way, since the team has drain, we already saw that, this crit chance and crit damage also turns out to be healing as well uh, because more damage output obviously generates more healing. So this is just super impactful. A lot of damage, a lot of sustainability for the team. Super important. <laughs> now, I do think that there is a tier... Uh, drop after this and I think though you could argue that only those six are essential but I felt like when I was comparing this to other infographics I had done for other teams that it was just not right for me to to take 
abilities that would be essential if they're on any other team and just drop them off here just because they're like what I'll call super essentials. Like those first six were like ridiculous level T4s. Uh, and I just felt like you just I had to keep them all um, on the same tier as I do in other infographics. And I will say, I think all of these T4s are ones you're going to want for this team. This is a horseman team it's an arena team so i just think you're going to invest very heavily in it and that's the so the next one's the wong ultimate and look at this i mean this this transfers all negative effects off of wong he clears all negative effects from himself and he he gets fi additional 15 percent of his max health as barrier instead of so go instead of 15 percent max health it's 30 percent max health it's just huge i mean this is the ability that really turns wong into a wall um, he is just a real thick wall, and he's doing a lot of retaliation damage. But what makes him the wall is, you know, when you you know use this ability early on in the match, obviously long cooldown, but he's going to get, he's going to clear everything, and he's going to get all that barrier up, and he's going to be, ideally, if you've got him, you know, large and geared up, he's going to be very thick. So I think that that's just absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, a vital ability for this team. All right. And then the next one is the Wong passive. You know, Wong, as I was mentioning a moment ago, you know, is, um, you know, an important character in this team. This is just purely passive uh, defense here. So first of all, defense up for two turns instead of one turn is really helpful. Defense up is a 50% damage reduction. So that's really important. And then armor, Armor is important because uh, if it's non-piercing damage, it's reducing the incoming damage. So that's just, in my mind, it's nice to have an always-on passive boost to the team. And I just I view it as essential for a team like this. <clears throat> that's an arena team. I don't see how you're gonna go up against a a, a team that that has that passive when you don't. I think it's just your it's an uphill battle. The next one is the Wong basic, and you may say, wait, <clears throat> philosopher, a basic. Why is the basic so important? Well, on this team, this is your cleanse. Clearing one negative effect from self and all Darkhold allies. And since he's a striker, um, you know, this means that you're going to be using this all the time. This is what's going to be clearing debuffs from your team. So hugely important. I mean, I, I think you could argue that this one, he goes even higher. It's just so vital to the team. It's very, very, very important ability because it's the cleanse for the team. All right, the next essential T4 is the Heartless Ultimate. Probably the most controversial ranking I have on here. I spent a lot of time debating this with people. And here's my reasoning on it. In the mirror match, in my opinion, and I've run a bunch of mirror matches, this is the ability that turns the tide and, and usually will knock a, uh, a, a, a match open for your team. So... And this is this iconic ability here for Heartless where he attacks all enemies for 300% damage. And then if you put the T4, it's 50% additional damage per positive and negative effect on self and on the primary target. And so the T4 gives an additional 60% damage. So it goes from 240 to 300 and then 20 additional damage per positive and negative effect. And so... You know, you know, in my experience, you know, Heartless has anywhere between, let's say, three to six, po you know, positive or negative effects on him. And then you choose the enemy, unless you're stuck behind a taunt, you're able to choose the enemy that has the most. A lot of times that could be seven or eight. But let's just say there's a t total of 10. That's an additional 260% damage on this AoE. In my experience, either this turns out to do very little because you're so far behind and you can't find a good target and then you're this you're screwed uh, or it just knocks them the the match wide open if you're at a high level so you you both have very heavily geared teams you know this is a way for you to just blow the match open so i think in the mirror match it's a very important ability um you know and and so i have it rated higher than some others um and this is one where i i've got there was some substantial disagreement on that one so i'm noting that but i i think that's really important all right, a next one here that I think is really important is the Morgan Basic. She, here she's going to be stealing, you know, this is an additional 5% health steal, so it steals 10% health. If you have her as Striker, this becomes even more important and it moves up the list. 
I'm kind of ranking it here, assuming you're going to have her skirmisher. We're going to talk about that um, in a little bit. But very important ability because it's just a ton of damage. And if, you, like I said, if it's your ISO attack even more, <laughs> she tends to basic quite a bit. Time warp, you know, you're basically using that once per arena match, most likely. You know, you'll use this once, and then she takes a lot of turns, so she's going to be basic, basicing quite a bit and does quite a bit of damage. So you want to essentially double that damage. <laughs> All right, the next one is the Heartless Special. And this is one where I really thought it, that maybe Heartless Special would be the first nice to have, and I and I decided that it was essential. And the reason why <clears throat> is is it doesn't seem like a lot. Okay, it's some damage, but it, but this reduction of speed bar on primary target by 15%. So why is that important? Well, often at the high ends of arena, you are basically doing a, a, a mirror match, right, of sorts. Whether it's Dorm Hold, where it's Dormammu plus Dark Hold, or it's Dark Hold, or whatever. Being able to make one of your characters go before the enemy's corresponding character is huge so it's like okay my dormammu goes before yours <laughs> my my morgan goes before yours whatever you're trying to accomplish i often am aiming for dormammu um you know the slow helps with that obviously the slow means that their speed bar uh, gain is going to be 50 percent slower but in my opinion getting additional speed bar reduction is is essential it's a very low end essential compared to some of the other ones where you're getting tons of health or armor or whatever but i think it is and the last one here is scarlet witch special and like i said i would not use her in the arena but in my opinion if you are not going to have this ability um done uh, i you know in my opinion i don't know why you would be using scarlet witch i mean she the, to me having the defense up on the redistribution is huge. I mean, I think redistributing the health, the squad's health is a cool ability. It can be very useful in certain contexts, but applying defense up is just absolutely huge. Um, it can mean the difference between, you know, living and dying in certain circumstances. I had done this T4 back when she was on Supernatural. Very important in that matchup. It's less important here because Wong um, <clears throat> applies two turns of defense up at the start. But usually in this matchup, if I'm using her with the team, the team doesn't need this in the very beginning. They're doing fine early on when you have that defense up. <clears throat> but in the middle of the match, when things are starting to, when the team's starting to fall off or have issues, let's say Wong is starting to die, that's when you need not only the, the redistribution, but putting that defense up, which reduces incoming damage by 50%, is pretty substantial. All right, so that's where I drew the line. I think you could arguably draw the line one or two higher, but that's where I drew the line here. Um, and so let's go to the nice-to-haves. And the next one is Scarlet Witch Ultimate, which frankly is just, I think, another really important ability of Scarlet Witch is if you're going to use her, always applying defense down is at a 50% chance is huge. You're going to only do it probably once per fight, but defense down is 50% additional incoming damage. So I think it's significant. And I think... I debated whether or not to have this in the essentials or not. I just feel like, as it is, I felt compelled to put her on here because she's part of the team. <clears throat> but since she's dropped off so often, I uh, dropped off the team. I really wasn't sure what to do with these. I think they're both. These, these T4s are really important if you do want to use the character. Uh, all right, the next one is the Scarlet Witch basic. You're, and you may be saying, wait, Philosopher, why are we going so hard on Scarlet Witch? Well, here's the thing with the basic. Um... You know, this, if the character is not at full energy, apply all this stuff. Offense down for two turns, defense down for two turns, and slow for two turns. So here's the thing. Why is that so important for this character? Well, this character is almost never at full energy. Because <clears throat> she's going to use this early on. <clears throat> you know, particularly when the enemy's got a bunch of debuffs, let's say, from, from uh, Agatha. And then she, this is a seven-turn cooldown. So she's, she's often going to not be at full energy. And, and this is also a long cooldown and situational. So you're going to end up basicing a heck of a lot. And so getting these debuffs out is really nice. Offense down and defense down and slow is actually a really nice basic. So, you know, to me, this is just, you, if you're going to use the character, you kind of have to do this. They made this very T4 intensive for a reason. That's scopely for you. <laughs> All right, the next one here is the Wong special. 
And, you know, like I said, just nice to have because we're talking, at this point, we're talking damage. Now, it is a lot of damage. If you have a big, thick wong, you're going to get a lot more damage out of this because ignoring defense up is bigger than you think. It means that that 50% damage reduction is not going to apply. And then, of course, 25% on, you know, three different attacks. And that's piercing damage is nice, too. So it's 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 sneaky a sneaky good ability, but I just put it in the nice to have category. And then the next one is the Agatha special, and um, you know this is another one where at this point we're just talking damage. It's a lot of damage. It's um, you know 180 percent piercing, which is a ton of damage. <clears throat> there, but you know it's still just I put it in the nice to have category. Just shows how T4 intensive this team is though. Why is was Wong's a little higher? Well, that was that fifty percent applied to the base. It wasn't just to the addition. It wasn't just to the additional damage. That fifty percent actually increased the base damage. <clears throat> All right, uh, effectively. The next one is the Agatha Basic, and the Agatha Basic um, it calls two random ad adjacent dark hold allies to attack the primary target instead of one. So um, this positioning that I have on the infographic assumes you're in arena. If you're not in arena, you want to move it. And you, what you want to do is you want to put Agatha on the end with a Morgan Le Fay next to her. So Morgan is always called. Okay, assuming you have a big Morgan. And the reason I put the, the positioning here the way it is um, is because Agatha can call two in the arena. So it's Heartless and Morgan both being called. And then I think Heartless is uh, more squishy than Morgan Le Fay. So I have him on the end. All right, so that's that's the idea there, but definitely, I mean, in if you're going to use her in arena, um, you know that ba that uh, that's a pretty nice upgrade to the basic. And then the next nice to have is the heartless basic, you know, a little bit less of an upgrade there, but significant. It's it's some good damage, another hundred and eighty percent piercing, which you know piercing damage once again that ignores armor, so that's really nice. And then we only have one meh T4 on this one. That's how good the T4 is in this team. And, of course, it's on Scarlet Witch. And her, um, and her passive is pretty bad. Just an additional 10% chance to spread a negative effect, which is this on-turn <coughs> spread, a, spread a negative effect thing, which is meh. All right, let's talk about ISO on this team. <coughs> a big thing I get asked all the time is, what ISO should you have on Morgan Le Fay? And you'll see I have Skirmisher. So why do I have Skirmisher? <clears throat> so in my opinion, a big determiner of success in this match is who goes first, and then does your Morgan land the ability block on the other Morgan or vice versa? If the other guy's Morgan Le Fay doesn't land the ability block on yours, even if they go first, that's a problem, and and so on, and, and vice versa. And so, uh, frankly, and I, that's why I said I gapped did a lot of math on this I was very impressed by that. You, it's very hard to guarantee that you're going to land the ability block. And so in arena, in a mirror match situation where you're facing an enemy Morgan, Skirmisher really, really helps just for the focus. And that's the only reason to go Skirmisher here, in my opinion. There's no other reason to go Skirmisher. It's purely for the focus. And just so we're clear what we're talking about, you get 50% focus here. That's That's what it all, you know, that's... Um, you know, that's all it is. Okay. So, you know, we're doing all of it for that. Otherwise, in other contexts, like let's say you're using this team in war, you're using the team in crucible and it's not a mirror match situation, then you want her striker. And so for me, the reason I put her skirmisher is I felt like this team currently in the game is so ridiculously overpowered that in other circumstances, I can get by without having her as a striker. But in Arena, where I'm facing, uh, you know, other huge Morgan Le Fays, it's really helpful to have her as Skirmisher. So that's why I invested it, because I was investing ISO 4 Ions, which are uh, very rare, unless you're spending a fortune, right? <clears throat> so, all right, what about the other ISO on this team? I think the other ISO on this team is pretty straightforward. Wong is definitely a striker. Why? Because of that cleanse. We saw that a moment ago. Agatha is a skirmisher. <laughs> Important for her to land those debuffs in particular. So that's just another reason I have her a skirmisher. Heartless as a raider does a ton of AOE damage. Uh, even on his basic, he's hitting three targets. And then Sc Scarlet Witch I have as a skirmisher. She 
there is an argument as to what's better. Would you want to have her as a raider or do you want to have her as a skirmisher? There's an argument for both, but in my opinion, she spends a lot of time basicing, okay, which means that your raider's not doing much because it's just a single target damage. And in, in my opinion, her making sure she lands her debuffs is important. Plus, a skirmisher will be landing vulnerables. And I so I, I think that's really nice. Is she'll land a vulnerable on her ultimate uh, when she you know they're on at least one character, and then she'll land the vulnerable on her basic for sure. You can control where those vulnerables go. So I think that's superior. Let's talk a little bit about gear priority here for a minute. Now I know that with a recent announcement uh, for Apocalypse, this is almost a moot point. You're gonna all have to gear these characters up. <laughs> but if you have limited gear, if you're in a a, a point in the game where you don't have the gear to blow on on this team uh, completely you really want to have a big morgan lefay for all sorts of reasons i mean she's a important character in the game a plug and play character in the game and frankly <laughs> she just does a ton of work on this team she's just a a, a, a massive um a piece of what of, of making this team go and if you're morgan small the other team's going to just destroy her Wong, why is Wong so big? Well, if you have a really thick Wong, and sorry for the pun, um, it is just very hard for the opponent to take him down. I mean, I bought him up to seven red stars. I put ISO four on Wong, and I did that just because having Wong be very difficult to take down makes the whole team much tougher on arena defense and on war defense and, and so on. Um, and then I think Agatha and Heartless are fairly interchangeable. I think arguments can be made in both. Um I think the the I think it's probably a little more important to have Agatha landing or debuffs and so having your bigger for that is, is good. But they're both I think equally important. And then Scarlet Witch is, like I said, pretty unimportant. I have not even put Seal Gear on my Scarlet Witch. I guess now eventually I'll have to when I have to enter that saga thing, but I I'm not gonna like it. It's just something I'm gonna have to do at some point, but I don't regard her, even though mine's seven red stars, I don't regard her as very important. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. If you have comments and you're, you're, you're upset about it, you disagree with it, please put that below. I, I've really tried to put a lot of time into this and get it right. I'm going to pump out some more T4 uh, infographics out soon. So can you put those below as well? You know, I'd really appreciate your thoughts on what teams you'd like to see next. So just tell me. I know I've been getting a lot of questions for these infographics. So please let me know. I'll get to work on them. So put, please, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, put your comments, put your thoughts on what teams you want to see next, put your disagreements with the infographic below, or just go to my discord. I do try to uh, hang out there and get your comments there. And you can also go to my Twitch stream that is linked below too.